At this point in the um, opening session of the conference, what I'd like to do is to introduce the people who are serving as facilitators for the next uh, round of um, activities that we're going to do here. What I'd like to do now, what we have along the table here, are the uh, five people who will be leading those sessions. And the sessions are not intended to be descriptions of everybody's work in, uh, in that's participating in the workshop uh, or in the roundtable, but instead looking at the key issues um, that exist in each of these areas. So if we can start with Christoph, um, tell us a little bit about what you do and then also um, the panel that you're on. Hello, muchas gracias. Uh, buenas tardes. Um, I will speak in English um, because my Spanish is not so good, but thanks, thanks for having me here as a moderator and, and facilitator. So I'm not one of the experts of the field of healthcare, um, but I enjoy or will enjoy actually hosting that session and facilitating that session on healthcare. What's, what's the topic? And we did this small email survey. So, so the topic is um, mobile technologies, of course. So this year is, is one topic that is, that is very hot, and we heard it in the... Um, in the presentation before, um, that is also affecting healthcare in a way. Uh, we heard something about partnerships. Um, partnerships, actually, we have um, our panelists have existing partnerships that have done projects together, so they can also share the experience of how partnerships enable technologies in healthcare for social change. Um, low income context, of course, that's, that's the point, um, how to use technology to access low income, but not only, right? I mean, we are also um, having innovations here in, in industrialized com uh, countries. Um, well, I said access to healthcare services and prevention, uh, especially this process innovation came up a lot. So, so these are just some, some of the headlines. Um, why you should come to this workshop, um, in, in my opinion and our opinion, is because we won't have a conventional panel up front um, and then hear for an hour what, what the uh, experts have to say, but we will actually engage with all the audience. So you come there, you have to work, unfortunately. Uh, hopefully you're willing to do so. Next, uh, we have um, Susana Munoz, um, who's going to facilitate and chair the session on education. So can you give us an insight into what you've identified as the issues? And we are going to talk about education. We are starting with the impact of ICT in education, but ICT, ICT is also impacting the society, but it's like a cycle. Society is also demanding ICT. Society is changing the education to be adapted to ICT and education is changing the society, so everything is related. From the education point of view, we are going to talk about some of the new key issues in education policies with Anna presentation from UPM, Anna Moreno. Uh, but not only to the generality, we are also going to see some uh, specific examples and experiences with Lorraine in New Zealand and with myself in the universities of Africa. Uh, of the use of ICTs for improving uh, the education. Um, uh, included in this part of education, also we are going to talk about a reflection about how uh, complex are the educational systems with uh, Peter, uh, Peter Scott from uh, the University of Toronto in Canada. In our session also, we are going to talk about entrepreneurship. We are going to talk about e-skills, e-leadership, because Pericles uh, from, um, from the Batnalon Education in Spain is going to tell us that uh, Mm, learning how to be entrepreneur also should be included in education. Niels from the, um, uh, in SEAT, France, is going to tell us specifically, specifically about these e-skills. Esther Verbung uh, was actually writing me to tell me which um, panel she wanted to participate at the same time that I was asking her to be the facilitator for the rural uh, or the agriculture and rural livelihoods. Tell um, us a little bit about who's in your group and what you're talking about. Well, Hans, it was actually the other way around because you asked me for a different panel and I said, no, no, I want to do the agriculture one because agriculture is so super relevant. I mean, just consider where we are today in the world. About 200 years ago, world population reached 1 billion people. 200 years later now, we're at 7 billion people. 
and around 2050, we expect to be at 9 billion people. So think about this. From the beginning of humanity till 200 years ago, it took us to reach 1 billion. In the last 200 years, we added another 6 billion people. So that places an enormous strain, basically, on the resources that we have in this world. Think about land, for instance. Think about water, because we have to feed all these people. Um, we'll have an amazing panel. Uh, Hillary, that you just also speak, she's part of it. Um, she's just one of, uh, one of a group of seven panelists. We also have uh, Jose Ignacio, who works uh, uh, as a managing director for Codesco. Um, he's been uh, uh, working for years on providing job opportunities. More than 200,000 people in rural areas now use, uh, use his methodologies and are involved. We have uh, Marcela, uh, who promotes uh, uh, knowledge around rural villages uh, through different sort of uh, systems, tourism, education, training. Uh, we have Ed, who's, uh, whose organization actually provided already ways to earn money for more than 140,000 people in rural communities. Uh, but we also have, for instance, Gonzalo, who has an award-winning blog. So, uh, loads of interesting talks, and uh, just as in the other workshops, you'll be asked to uh, share your opinion, ask questions, and work with us on providing information on what it is that we need now to, uh, to come further in the field of agriculture. Uh, the next panel, the next roundtable, is actually on energy. We honed in on Ferdinand Schneider, who's been one of our um, uh, INSEAD um, social entrepreneurs since the very beginning, I think, and there is as Esther. So I'm going to let you talk a little bit about the group that you've got in energy. Uh, energy. Energy is a very controversial theme uh, for the future uh, because we have old-fashioned thinking, uh, we have new energy, uh, energy technologies, and the big question which we have in front of us is, are going the new energy technologies take over uh, as the mobile technology did in the mobile phones. Uh, can we imagine that uh, energy is so cheap that each one of us in the, in the world uh, can, or is supplied with energy in a very cheap way? I'm very humble with all these people sitting there. We, we have about 90% of Spain in my... <laughs> so, uh, we, uh, we have Uganda, uh, and uh, we have big companies and we have small companies in our uh, panel. So it's uh, very interesting to see how we can uh, negotiate uh, a finding out of this. And uh, my aim is uh, to come up with a solution uh, how we can support, how the old guys can support the new guys. Finally, um, Elena uh, has, been, has taken on the challenge of gender and women's empowerment? Um, I think we have a really, really, really interesting panel here because of two things. First of all, because of the group of panelists I have uh, in the round table, which I think uh, their um, accumulated knowledge and experience they have uh, between amongst all of them is impressive and hopefully will um, allow us to reach very interesting conclusions. Uh, our panel will try to discuss and propose possible ways for technology, innovation, and social change, which is a kind of innovation in a way, from my point of view at least, um, how these um, innovations can help achieve gender equality and women empowerment. So thanks to all, my panelists are uh, mainly Spanish, with one very interesting international representation, Fatou, from the Gambia. And the other persons are Capitolina Diaz, which is a professor in sociology at the University of Valencia. She has been general director of equality in employment. Uh, Guillermo Caldevila, founder and well, CTO of Proctec. Uh, Patricia Morella from Ayuda en Acción. Amalia Navarro uh, at the UN Millennium Campaign. She's coordinator in Spain. Catalina Parra from Hazlo Posible and other NGOs and Ines Sánchez de Madariaga, current head of Women and Science Unit at the Ministry of Economy. So our panel is really exceptional, and thank you all for being here. My friends, I have to tell you, you did it. You sold it to me, and I have to close it, because I, I would love to be in, in each of your sessions. And uh, we've been talking about technology, but technology still uh, is not able to give me the opportunity to be in five uh, different places at the same time. And 7.15, uh, We'll meet here again to do like a wrap-up, okay? Thank you. Thank you.